Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 771. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm Calvin Robinson. This day is the 15th of November, the year of our Lord, 2022. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Anglican Unscripted. This is going to be a fun one. I have a brand new guest on the other side of the camera. This is Calvin Robinson. But before we get to Calvin, please like this episode. If, you, if you're not subscribed to Anglican Unscripted yet, please subscribe. If you want to go to the comment section and, and discuss what we discussed on today's show, and you probably will, please do that on YouTube. You click on the show notes, you go there, there's a comment section, and you can tell us what you think. Hopefully you think what we think, but you probably don't. Whatever. <laughs> Calvin, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you for the invitation. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm great, thank you. Yeah, not too bad. How are you? Okay. I'm doing well. Uh, well I, <clears throat> for you, it's like 1 or 2 o'clock uh, GMT. For me, yeah. it's bright and early in the morning, so <laughs> you've had half a day to waste. I'm still sipping on my coffee, so we're doing well. I'm glad. I have only just finished my first coffee, to be fair. I've just, just come off air, so. Okay, okay, great. Um, for people who don't know, you are a commentator for GB. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So GB News is a brand new channel, a year and a half old now in the UK, looking to provide a different perspective because the BBC, Channel 4, ITV, Sky News, they're all pretty much singing from the same hymn sheet. And they are, you know, in that same Westminster bubble of metropolitan liberal elites. So it's not necessarily left wing or right wing, it's just their own little bubble. And BBC yeah. um, has, been, has had a monopoly for a long, long time. So GB News came along and said, look, it's time to shake things up a bit. And we want to answer the questions that people want answering. Well, hold on, the BBC assured me that they're not biased. <laughs> in fact, I've met with two or three of the reporters over the years, wow. and uh, we're not biased. We we just tell you what you need to know. There's nothing more biased than well, I, not nothing more. The ch Channel Four is more biased, <laughs> but the BBC is incredibly biased. But this is the problem with these massive organisations, in that they just end, end up recruiting people that think like them and become a big hive mind of is it's an echo chamber essentially. But they don't always realise it, and that's the worst thing about it. Because I think the, the vast majority of people in in England are small c conservative in their values you know family community orientated that the the metropolitan liberal elites are more globalist in, and more liberal in their values and there's a clash there and we often see that they're looking down their noses at us they're sneering at us because they think we're not quite uh, as evolved as they are and that's the big thing they think they're just more educated and we haven't really we haven't sat down to reason out what they already know and yeah, yeah. yeah it, they'll, they'll it's, teach us yeah, and so it's kind of annoying to talk to a, a uber liberal, uh, especially here in America, because they don't have time to sit and listen. They've already had their, and they didn't decide this. The people they follow and the people who influence them have already decided what they're going to know and what they're going to understand as far as uh, uh, society. So uh, I also, uh, I failed to mention, well, I didn't fail, I, I planned it this way. Uh, you are Father Kelvin robinson uh you right. were reared in the church of england but you are now uh in a different organization in uh the uk i thought we could talk about that as well no absolutely yeah i uh got ordained a deacon in the free church of england which is under the gafcon umbrella i think your viewers will be very familiar with gafcon the global sure. movement of orthodox anglicans and it's it's quite a small movement over here in the uk at the moment but it is growing it's building momentum but it, uh, it's my job to let people over here know that you can remain Anglican and be Orthodox, even though the Church of England has entered apostasy. You don't have to move with the Church of England. You can stay an Orthodox Anglican within GAFCON. And there are a few different angles within GAFCON in the UK. But um, it's reached a great point in America with the ACNA, and there's a lovely new provision in Australia, and they're doing great things in Canada. So I'm hoping that here in the UK we'll uh, strengthen and, and grow in numbers as, as well as grow in faith too. Um, and I think that we, we, if we look towards the, the greater Anglican communion, we are in communion with 70 to 80% of Anglicans who are Orthodox. It's just that small minority that's very vocal in the West that is trying to undermine Christian teachings. 
Well, let's talk about the small minority that's very vocal. You put out a uh, video where you discussed marriage, and you said marriage should be between a man and a woman. None else is holy matrimony. Makes sense. Okay, makes sense to me. That that's because yeah, that, you're a bigot, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the last two thousand years, that has been the the Christian understanding. For the last yeah. six thousand years, that's been the the, the Judeo understanding. Yeah. So, what on earth did you do? Because I'm watching Twitter. I follow you on Twitter, and it was like uh, just an ebb of explosion. He did not say that. He, yeah, oh. I can't believe their disbelief. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I was wearing my dog collar. I'm a, I'm a Christian cleric. This is what you do. should expect. A Christian pastor to say that marriage is between one man and one woman. It's monogamous, as in there's only two people involved in it, and it's heterosexual, as if as in there's a there's a man and a woman. That's the basics of the Christian teaching, or as you rightly say, the Judeo-Christian teaching. So either people have gone astray and been teaching something else, or we've gone entirely quiet and we haven't been teaching it at all. If it's surprised people, but it's turned out to be one of the most controversial things I've said. I really wasn't intending to be controversial. And, People often say, oh, you, you get out there, you try to be... I really don't try to be controversial. I just try to proclaim the truth as best I can. And I thought that's a basic truth. Let me start there, because we're having a debate about whether homosexual marriage should be a thing in the Church of England. And I'm like, well, it can't be, because marriage is between one man and one woman. And the, the, the reaction has been astounding. Well, I, my re when I watch something like this, I watch for who doesn't respond. And you Ooh. gave a Christian teaching... And the Church of England did not respond and say, oh, Calvin got it right. It seems that there's a big fear in speaking out for what you do believe or what your uh, church does profess. Uh, yeah. Certainly here in America, they're afraid to do it. Uh, has wokeism so overtaken the UK that nobody will speak out in support of you? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Exactly it, Kevin. We had, I think it's 10 bishops came out to say that they are apostates and they think that we should change Christian doctrine and they believe that they, we've changed our mind as a, as a church on the stance of marriage, as if we have the the authority to change Christ's teachings. Anyway, ignoring their arrogance for a second, how many bishops from the Church of England do you think came out in, in opposition of that and said, no, we must defend uh, Scripture, we must defend the Christian faith? Not one. Not one bishop. We had probably three Christians with with any influence. There was this Ian Paul, uh, Vaughan Roberts. They both did good pieces. It's like why why are where are the bishops? Where are the people who it's their job to be doing this, to be proclaiming the truth, and to be defending the faith? Defenders. Of I'm at a loss. Yeah, they're, they're absent. They're away without without leave. They're you know, there just is no reason in this. We've elected a whole class of people to lead our church who aren't. Yeah. And yeah, they, are, uh, they are wolves. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. There's plenty of scripture about false teachers and false prophets, and it seems that we've elected 116 of them to the House of Bishops. <laughs> I would say there's more teaching uh, in the New Testament on wolves and false teachers than there is on marriage. I mean, it, it's you know, it's clearly yeah, identified. Yeah. They're going to come up yeah. here, and you're you're not going to know who they are, and they're going to start teaching you something that is unbiblical, and be wary. And yeah. so uh, you also put other videos up. I saw one on reparations. How did that fare? <laughs> yes, I went to the Cambridge Union, which is the second best university in the country, one of the best universities in the world. Uh, I thought this will be interesting. This will be fun. I didn't expect to win the debate because the proposition was this house should pay reparations. And of sure. course, we're living in woke times. So I expected, you know, I'll lose it, but it'll be good fun. It'll be engaging with intellectuals. And I like a bit of a challenge. There's no challenge at all, Kevin. It's the most depressing thing I've ever seen. I was in the hall full of entitled, snooty little brats who thought, you know, one of them actually stood up and said, we don't need a history lesson, we're Cambridge students. They actually thought they knew it all, and they weren't interested in listen to, listening to my argument in the opposition, saying that we shouldn't pay reparations for, for the transatlantic slave tape because we already have, and, you know, Great Britain was instrumental in ending slavery, not just here, but around the world, and paid a great cost in, in monetary terms and in lives, that's something to be discussed. But they weren't interested in listening. They were sneering, giggling, clasping, uh, you know, clutching their pearls, and just, it was childish, immature behavior. And they were clearly uncomfortable with everything they were saying, like physically uncomfortable, which tells me they're not used to hearing things that makes, that, that jars their 
current perspective, their worldview. And if they're not doing that in university, what are they doing? No, that, it's, and that's a great response. Because you have to ask yourself, why can't we have adult conversations anymore? Why are there topics we're not allowed to talk about? Uh, Woke has said, this is the rule. This is in stone. We will not change your mind. And you are not allowed to talk about it unless you want to be canceled. And yeah. that that's the, that's the whole new zeitgeist going on here is we have reason we are adults but we don't have a voice anymore yeah and so so in this debate 300 students voted for reparations 90 something voted against but not one of them made a floor motion or a point of interest or not one of them spoke up in the chamber in, in favor of the opposition because they didn't but even on my panel so there are three people in the proposition arguing for reparations there are three of us in the opposition uh, myself and a friend of mine who are both commentators we're both commentators but there was a student with us so this student, I thought this would be a great experience for him, arguing in the opposition in a challenging context, in a, a difficult topic. This will be amazing for him. No, he stood up and basically conceded every point. He said, yes, yes, you guys are right, but it just wouldn't work practically because X, Y, Z. You are giving away the arguments and you're so afraid of making an argument of, of the opposition because you know you're going to get lynched by the mob. And I was actually like, you know what? He's probably quite wise to do that because these people would lynch him. They're not ready yeah. to hear an opposition view. It's that sad. All right. The Telegraph put out a press report last week or two weeks ago that the NHS, which is your health system over in uh, the UK, has put out a new directive for transgenderism. They say it's just a phase. This is uh, a quote from a doctor in the NHS, a, a leading doctor says most children who believe that they are transgendered are just going through a phase the nah said and it warns that doctors should not encourage them to change their names pronouns have surgery take uh blockers we need to stop the new york times yesterday did just about the same and posted all these uh scientists who said you know what we're doing is you know low level nazism we're butchering our children in the prime of their life, uh, t you know, for attraction, for feelings, for, you know, being confused. Did you, you think the pendulum before, 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 well, hold on, before I showed you that uh, news story from the, the Telegraph, did you know about it? No, no, I hadn't heard no. that. <laughs> Which is surprising because I'm quite invested in this conversation. I'm quite involved in this area of debate. I hadn't seen yeah. that yet. And, and you hadn't seen it because the second there's any information, especially scientific, to the contrary, it's mm. it's hidden away. It's not spoken about. We will. That's the stuff we can't talk about. Yeah, no, it is. And, and it's crazy. I'm seeing more and more people who have been through this process and transitioned, so-called, to an, another sex, who have found that actually they're so unhappy, they're still unhappy or even more unhappy than they were before they got affirmed and, and medically castrated and, and physically castrated. Uh, and they want to detransition. And the whole community, the whole trans community who were with them all the way through the journey, affirming them and saying, yes, this is right, this, is, this will make you happy, they drop them like a ton of bricks and actually turn against them. And they're hostile towards these people. They do. There's a Reddit page called Detrans that has 40,000 kids who are looking to get their body parts back. And Lord have mercy. Uh, the, the, if you go the, this morning's post is, um, I stopped taking the hormone blockers. I had a mastectomy. Will my breasts go back? Oh, gosh. What are we doing uh, to these kids? You know, and I had my vo my vocal cords uh, surgically manipulated so I could sound like a woman. Uh, I I don't like that sound anymore. What do I do? Where do I go? Where do I go for help? Because there's nobody in the uh, uh, trans community who wants to help them. There's nobody in the LGTB community who wants to help them because uh, they're still searching for themselves. You know. This is not about helping young people. This is not about helping people become their true selves or helping people with their mental illnesses. This is 
it's an evil movement that is looking to affirm itself and it's using it's taking advantage of vulnerable young people and bringing them on board to what is essentially a cult and it, there's nothing worse i don't think there's anything more evil than than the destruction of young people and that's what's going on right now and i'm, I'm glad that the, the pendulum is starting to swing back in the other direction and if people if scientists and doctors are starting to say hang on a bit well, is this what we're doing correct? Oh, we don't usually affirm mental illness. We don't usually um, surgically alter people to make them match what's going on in their, in their heads. Usually we address the chemical imbalance in their heads to make it match their body. But that's, I think the disconnect there, Kevin, is because people have lost faith. So they're looking at this entirely in the abstract. If they looked at it from the perspective that we are our body, we can't disassociate from it, we can't separate ourselves from it, we are our body, and we were designed this way and thought of and known by God before we were even born, and that he des He designed us man and woman on purpose, then we wouldn't be saying, okay, let's change that, let's alter that, because that's an affront to God. Yeah, it's, it's demonic, it's satanic, and it is destroying a whole generation of our youth. Um, but, who and who's will, the only trans person in the Bible? The only trans person in the Bible is Jesus was transfigured. <laughs> or transfigured, yeah. But I think the only trans sexual person in the Bible would be would be Satan himself. Yes, absolutely. Um, and so, in as such, we've we've come to the point, and Scripture tells us uh, that as as people, we should be able to reason together. Mm. And so, how do we overcome this wokeness? Uh, where we as adults can stand before people our age, older, younger. Uh, I'm a boomer, so uh, I, <laughs> I stand you know, probably in the upper age group here and have adult reasons conversations. And I think this next generation coming up has lost reason. And I think a lot of that is we've given up our universities and our schools to the liberals. And said yeah teach away go ahead we, we trust you and they said good because we're trustable and especially here in america uh if you're going to an american uh school k through 12 or a university you mm -hmm. are taught to distrust and hate your government you are taught that there is no god and that you can mock uh people of different faiths that you, you that don't agree with you and that your teachers love you more than your parents i'm not sure if it's that way in the uk yeah. but yeah it is unfortunately and we're seeing this movement that teachers can have secrets with students um you know they don't have to share with parents if they're using a different pronoun or a different name and that to me sounds like grooming that's a safeguarding concern but i think you're right kevin we have lost reason but it's deeper than that I think if we look to the root of Anglicanism, of reason, tradition, and scripture, we've lost all three, and we need to reclaim all three. And it's not just in society, it's in the church too. So yes, we've lost reason, and we can't debate properly and reasonably anymore, but we've lost tradition in that anything that's older than five minutes ago is seen as repugnant and to be disregarded in, in the name of progress. And then we've lost scripture in terms of we don't refer to scripture uh, for the answers anymore. We look for scripture to fit our purposes and to shape it around what we've already assumed that we have become gods in and of ourselves i'm using the word we a bit liberally there but you know what i mean what, no no I, I i do it all the time you're allowed to do it so yeah we we you know even inside the christian church are doing this wrong and we got to where we are because the church never said stop you're going too far that this is wrong and this is demonic and ungodly uh the church let the seminaries go uh when and yeah I, where did you go to seminary uh i went to a seminary in oxford it's probably the last remaining sound seminary in the country actually probably yeah uh and so you know we, we let all these go and we empower people who don't believe in god we empower people who don't understand reason and who hate the country that they're in and we expected uh to have good results and this is what we got you know yeah, I, don't, so. I don't see how we see that as a good thing it's baffling to me. <laughs> it is baffling. Calvin, I, I've taken up a, a wonderful 20 minutes of your time, and I thank you very much for that. I hope we can get together in the future and uh, have this tete tete between the UK and an American boomer talking about wokeism. <laughs> I'm Kevin anytime. Carlson. Oh, anytime. I'm Kevin Carlson. I've been joined by Cal Father Calvin Robinson. Next time. Okay.